Oh man, it's been a long time since we released a new Maps program, but we have a new one, and I'm actually going to give it away for free to one of you lucky viewers. Not only that, I'm going to give away a bunch of free stuff with this program. So the program's called Maps Resistance. It's the perfect way to get started with resistance training. So if you're just getting started, if you found this podcast and you're like, look, I want to start resistance training, and I did it in the past, but I'm not quite sure what to do, Maps Resistance is perfect, and it includes three separate workout programs, one with body weight and bands, one with dumbbells, and one with barbells and dumbbells. So anybody can follow this program. You build muscle, boost your metabolism, help yourself burn body fat. Also, here's what I'm going to give away with that. I'm going to give you the Intuitive Nutrition Guide for free to help you with your diet. I'm going to give you two eBooks written by Jason Phillips. He's the founder of NCI Coaching. And the eBooks are Macros Explained and Macros Applied. And I'm going to give away free access to our forum for an entire year so you have your support along the way. So here's how you can enter to win all of that stuff right now. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Please subscribe and turn on notifications. Got to do all those things. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get all that stuff for the perfect way to get started. Now, everybody else, if you want to get that program, if you want to get that whole starter bundle, which includes all of that stuff, it's only $77 right now. If you bought everything separately, it would cost you over $320. Huge discount, only going on until December 28th. Here's what you do if you're interested. Head over to mapsresistance.com and then use the code Resist 20 to get that discount with all that free stuff. All right, here comes the show. Here's your fit tip today. I got one for you. If you are looking to lose weight, don't follow the Will Smith approach. Mm -hmm. That's going to rub some people the wrong way. It is. Yeah, you he, know why? He's so likable. I, yeah. And I he's love so him. He's so likable. I, like I, I want to put I want a disclaimer. I fucking love, well, I don't know him, right? But his his persona, and I actually watched his whole series. I don't know if you guys watched the YouTube I series. I watched the Most first of one. It, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I got of course, about you only through. watched the first one. That's what, anytime we have homework, that's what he does. So. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. Should have just sent him over Excuse the cliff the notes. Cliff notes. Hey, look, yeah, I, three, I don't know I why. I got three kids, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I got three, I got three kids to feed. What you sound like that guy Total Recall. Yeah, exactly. Hey, man, I got five kids to feed. Take him to the dentist. <laughs> With the weird arm. I got five kids, man. Yeah. Oh. You know, at, no, it was actually, uh, I actually got emotional a couple times and it was so, it was so good. Like, he is so talented and authentic and just i don't know he's he's up there with probably uh one of the, one of my favorite people as far as you know famous but it always blows my mind someone of is his caliber the money he's got he's got a trainer who he's had for like nine years and just the advice and the stuff they're doing is shit yeah um, and, and what i don't know is this so disclaimer I don't know if there is this, because what I want to be careful of is like, you know, what if I was hired to do something like this, right? They said, hey, Adam, Will Smith wants you to be his, yeah. you're getting He's shape, on the right? clock. He has a very specific goal of losing this weight. It's also uh, entertainment. Well, yeah. yeah. So what I don't what I don't know is if he actually does have a really intelligent trainer who's giving him better advice off, off camera, or maybe it was even on camera, but they're like, that's not juicy for TV. Yeah. Right. You know, we need to drama. And because it does have that feel of they, they're trying to dramatize the pound every week that he's got to lose. Yeah. So I, in the first episode, right. spoiler alert, uh, he, so I don't watch the second or third yet, but in the first one, at the end of the first week, he gains a pound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's really crapped out about it. And I thought that was a great opportunity to talk about what often happens in the first week, especially if you're lifting weights, so especially the, if you're a man. So yeah. that's what I'm alluding to right now. What I don't know is, you know, did his trainer off air be like, dude, don't even trip. You probably built a little bit of muscle. You're probably water. Like it's yeah, not why even, not body you know, fat test? This is scale. Right. Exactly. So you don't see any of that in the video. All you see is him like beat up. Now, I don't think he got that advice from his trainer because you, I, if you watch the next episode, his response was fasting. Mm -hmm. So then he goes right into oh, that's terrible. he goes into eating like boiled eggs and vegetables. Well, for he like, did that without his trainer's knowledge, right? Right. He yeah. didn't get that advice from, and I don't, I don't think his trainer would advise it. But that also too, like I feel like if if uh, if I was coaching him, like Sal said, uh, I would have used that opportunity to then say, "Hey, bro, don't trip. Like this is totally normal in the first week. Sometimes you're, we're going to see a little bit of a, especially when you saw how hard he was weight training. I mean, yeah. he wasn't training at all. Then all of a sudden, he's weight training well, like he, that. Okay, you're talking. Okay, Will Smith, who in the past several times has had a lot more muscle on his body. Yeah, he's got he muscle played, memory. He played uh, I Am Legend. He mm -hmm. was muscular, right? When he was Muhammad Ali, very muscular. So he's got muscle memory. Stopped working out. 
gained a bunch of body fat for his uh, his role in uh, King or whatever, the, yeah. the, 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 where he was uh, Serena Williams played that right. his father. So if you're gonna lift, if you're a man with that kind of muscle memory, he's obviously got some athletic ability because mm-hmm. he's got a natural build. You're, go- I, I would have told him ahead of time in the first week or two. Don't the scale's probably not going to change or might go up a little bit, but your body fat's going down while your muscles going up, and we're going to test body well, fat. Well, kn- knowing right. his past and his body type, I actually the goal. Even if our goal was because their, their main objective was lose 20 pounds in 20 weeks, mm-hmm. which is very doable, mm-hmm. uh, in doable even the healthy way. But I actually would have said the first couple of weeks, I don't really give a shit. I want to go up, if yeah. anything. Yep. Let's build right well, now. Well, I wouldn't even focus on the scale at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's build the first like four or five weeks. Let's build the metabolism. Let's build some muscle. Yep. And then we could really crank it up. To, and the yeah, So their approach is bad. I mean, they, they, they start him off right away on like five to seven days of cardio mm-hmm. in addition to his in, in addition to his weight training the mm-hmm. intensity is is there training to failure you see multiple times he's you know last rep he could squeeze out so i guess where i i know I, from out of shape to that that's a really fast jump to train that way right away it didn't need to no yeah, not only do you not need to. need to but it's actually counterproductive right yeah. that's and that's the point i want to make is that you know uh because even though you as you watch the whole journey go through he ends up i mean he looks pretty good towards the end um, and he had good results uh, overall. If you're if you're all we're watching is a scale, but I bet you if you watched the body fat percentage week over week, you could have made a way better improvement well, in that short amount of time. Well, people don't know this, but let's say you're 200 pounds and 15 percent body fat, and you gain 10 pounds of muscle, and you don't lose any body fat at all in terms of on the scale. So you've lost no body fat. You've only gained 10 pounds of lean body mass. Your body fat percentage has actually already dropped. Because you now have more lean body mass and your body fat total is a smaller yeah. percentage of your all body of the weight. Overall. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's how percentages work. For example, <clears throat> if you know, if a guy like my size, let's say I'm I'm walking around at let's say nine percent body fat, if you were to peel all the body fat off my body and put it on a one hundred pound person, they would automatically <clears throat> be twice have twice the body fat that I have because it's a percentage of body weight. So the scale is um, is not a great by itself. It's a terrible metric. It's not, and it messes with you all the time. And I only ever used it with clients if it if it also came with circumference measurements and body fat percentage measurements, so I could get lean body mass and fat mass. Otherwise, like you know, it, it's actually expected. If I were training Will Smith, I would expect his weight to at the at the absolute least stay the same, but probably go up because mm-hmm. of all the muscle that he's gained. And then they don't talk about in the beginning. I don't know how they talk about this at the end. If they do, in that first week, I would have said, "Well, you're stronger. How's your stamina? How do you feel?" Right? Instead of he was so crapped out because the scale. Oh, there was lots of lessons in this thing. I mean, they uh, they were they were being competitive with mild times, which was I think a terrible idea. They decide one day they're going to do a step challenge. Mm -hmm. He gets so obsessive with the step challenge. That he ends up like pulling a hammy and he couldn't even finish it the next day. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so he had, now you have a setback. You he was, work he's out. writing his memoir in the middle of all this. So he had like incredible like stress and deadlines and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And then like still cramming yeah. in like these 30 minute intense workouts in between because he had. Now <clears throat> you have to talk about the, the brilliance though of what. Because like after I watched all of it and I kind of took a step back and went like. <laughs> Okay, let's take a uh, forget the trainer in me that's like wants to pick apart all the things that I think I would have done different. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I don't really even think that was the desired outcome here. I think that uh, this was a a brilliant creative way to launch a book. I, I agree yeah, exactly because the way they do it, lots so, of drama attached to that's the, right. The every and, and every episode, yeah. the, he's he's breaking down a chapter in the book. So mm-hmm. just like how Jordan Peterson launches his his like his twelve chapters, and he give, yeah. they give you a little synopsis, yeah, a little of what, snippets. Yeah. So he does that, and then intertwines it into the storytelling of yeah. losing weight. If that was the goal. I thought that was they, for brilliant. sure. It they was crushed it. You got to know that Will's smart enough to know that one of the most popular things on YouTube are transformation videos. Mm-hmm. He and he's one of the most famous people out and there. You got to show the drama. You got to show the struggle. Yes. You got to show the speed at which you make this happen, how hard it is. That's what people well, want to watch. And he already got like an insane amount of attention when he posted that. I don't know if it was on Instagram or the dad bod, yeah, thing. The dad bod yeah. thing just went like crazy. And so it's like, oh, wow. The response for that, I'm sure, you know, catapulted that idea. Oh, I, well, I actually think he already had it. He already had was, it going into I think that, that was setting yeah. the table. I think that he did the King Richard thing. You got to know that he had the contract already for the book well before all of this. So the book was already planned to do it. 
King Richard thing comes right. out. He knows he puts on the most weight he's ever put on in his life, and the light bulb goes off. Oh, here we go. I know what I'm going to do. I'm in the worst shape of my life. I'm going to get in the best shape of my life. I mean, I had a similar moment for myself when I decided to get back into fitness. When I decided to get back into fitness, yeah, it's it was, very similar to what I you just did. so happened to yeah. be in the worst shape of my life. And I went, oh, this is yeah. perfect. I'm going to turn on social media for the first time ever. Like, I'm going to show a transformation. I'm going to like document the whole process so people can see it. And that I had the same type of. Yeah, idea. this is the challenge with uh, fitness media. If you have any integrity, is how do I get the attention so that I can deliver the right information? But, all, you know, but also maintain my integrity. That's very challenging to do because you're competing with people who are selling it in ways that are effective, which is the struggle and the, you know, the biggest loser approach and the crying and the hammering and I can't move and I'm so sore. And then you, you're like, okay, I know that that's not the right approach, but the right approach is boring. I mean, let's be honest, right? If you did the right yeah. approach, well, that's why it would the, not be. I know, dude. That's why it was not the, drama enough. When you said that, oh, we could totally shoot a documentary like this and do it better. It's like, no, I don't agree. With well, that. so, so no. <laughs> I think yeah. that we, Thanks for bringing that up. No, you, here's what I think. It's not going to be the not, engaging. Not that we're going to do this. We're not going to do this. But if we did, I think it's there's enough awareness now around these transformation type videos and fitness entertainment that the approach would be. I'm going to get in the best shape of my life, but I'm going to do it the right way. And then through the process, you're pointing out, normally this is what they show, but this is how you're supposed to do it. And then this is what I do, and this is what you're not supposed to do to show how you really do it. And then to show the results at the end where people go, oh, wow, it actually You would almost really need, I, I would think, like two different um, uh, like uh, case studies going on at the same like time, comparison. right? Yeah, the comparison of how Hollywood kind of portrays it versus like <laughs> it, it almost would have to be on a time lapse right yeah. you'd have to like super speed you know the longer approach in order to condense it down yeah. to something you know what's funny is that it's the the challenge and the, the the difficulty of it is part of the sex appeal when people watch it but people mistaken because everybody knows it's very challenging to transform your health and your fitness it's it is it's a challenging process but people mistaken what part is challenging they think the challenging part is can I withstand brutal, destructive workouts and extremely restrictive diet for 20 weeks? That's actually not the challenging part. The challenging part is can I make consistency? Yeah, lifelong, forever changes. And that's what makes it really hard. And to be honest with you, and I'll argue this all day long, the 20 you know, week hammer my body, restrict myself is actually easier. It is far easier. In fact, yep. people do that all the time. People lose weight all the time that way. So you would just have to find a way to to present the real way. In I a just way don't, that's, I don't uh, think that exists. Sexy. I really don't. I don't think it's, I don't think it is sexy. I think it like it, there's parts in there where, you know, they, they dramatize, you know, him quitting and him mm -hmm. like not wanting to show up the next day of like flaking on his thing because he's just like burnt out and all this thing. And they spin it in a way that it's like, like the, but the truth is, and then they, they cut over to the therapist every once in a while, which the therapist is probably the most logical person of everybody that's in the, in the documentary. Yeah. Like she's like, you know, encouraging him to do what's best for him yeah. versus, you know, like what he, he's got to prove people or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just, it's not, that's not sexy and entertaining to be. The truth is that the trainer who's meeting him seven days a week, if my client who's been burning the candle at both ends, if they're like, man, I am burnt. I yeah. I would, I would, what I tell him is like, don't come. Or I'd say, Hey, why don't you come? Let's walk. Let's yeah. walk and let's, let's process what you're going. Restorative. Yeah. Let's just talk. Let's, let's get just you talk. A massage. Let's get you. Yeah. yeah like, which nobody wants to see that. <laughs> no, what they want to, what they want to see yeah. is that he's got adversity yeah. and then he overcomes it and yeah. he pushes through in spite of it. Right. And because that's motivating and that will give you those, those juices flowing when you, when you watch it. How much does this conversation yeah, remind totally. you of the first conversations? that we had when we started the podcast. Remember oh, that? We used to talk all the time about how are we going to impact the... It was a big lofty goal. I, I, we're maybe a bit narcissistic, but we thought we would be able to do this. And we said, how are we going to be able to impact the fitness industry at large and outsell... In other words, you know, reach more people than the other guys who are selling everything the wrong way, but it's sexy, it's flashy. We had lots of conversations yeah. about this. Like, we got to beat them at their own game. They're saying lose 30 pounds in 30 days by take a pill. We're saying it'll take you two years to lose 30 pounds. Oh, dude. It's, you know, it it's brings, like, how do we do that? It brings it all back, right? Because it's entertaining. Like, I was sucked in, like, and you you get into the drama of it, and, and this is just the narrative that just keeps repeating itself because people see that, and they're like, yeah, I can do that, you know, because it's almost like this this one hard push and then then we're there you know and then oh, that's yeah. it and right. so that's a, that's a message that just keeps uh you know perpetuating our
our industry. That's yeah. why I don't. I mean, one, I don't know if it'll ever leave. Two, I don't know if we could ever create something that does uh, that is uh, as appealing but done the right way because right. the right way isn't appealing. It's just not. It's not sexy. It's yeah, boring. It's slow. It's got yeah, a lot when I, of... When I would watch The Biggest Loser, I would imagine like what it would really look like with a yeah. good trainer. Like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. No, no, we need to stop. You're going too hard. Let's relax a little bit. Oh, you lost too much weight this week. Let's back you off. The viewer would be like, click. Yeah. I'm, this is boring. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah dude, terrible. You ever talk to like a, a police officer, like, a, like an actual cop or an actual doctor about TV shows about like oh, law yeah. enforcement yeah. And, and hospitals? It's the same thing. Yeah. Like we'd never pull a gun out in yeah. that situation. Oh, yeah. dude, it's like... Yeah. Yeah, or they're my, like, that happens 1% of the time. My buddy's yeah, like... Yeah. I have a buddy who's a cop, and he's like, dude, he goes, if 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 that was what it was like every single day, like, we would... like No way we would last. He goes, yeah. that happened, like, twice in my life. Most well, of the time, and I'm that's a, people that's, were, a, that's a good point in, in analogy there, too, because there are times when, like, you're down, you're not motivated, and you should persevere and, and step up and go. But it's like that's the 1%, right? There's there's that few times where you're having that self-talk or doubt or yeah. you're discouraged and you should overcome, step up, let's do it. But they play into that so much that they think that like every time you you run into that, yeah. it's hard or you don't feel like doing it, that you should like, you got this, overcome yeah. it, you know? You know what two things about it that stood out for me was um, that yeah. had nothing to do with fitness? One was the way the therapist talked about how Will Smith used – entertainment and humor how it was this ultimate protection mechanism right oh, you missed what it got really good with that yeah. towards the the later shows yeah so mm -hmm. I, I really like that because it is true uh, it, with people that it, one way to protect themselves from being ridiculed or bullied well or, did you hear the story totally where it all started like, for him no so where it started for him and he he's like tells the story it's very emotional uh, there's like probably like three different uh parts where i got really emotional in it and he tells a story of him and his, his siblings standing in the doorway and watching his dad clock his mom mm. to where blood was coming out of her mouth mm -hmm. and he said that moment changed all th the trajectory of all three of the kids lives and his, he, he he said his brother was fight his sister was flight and he was uh, entertained. Mm. And it was all to, you know, his brother would push back and fight. His, his sister would flight, run run from the situation. His was distract. Just deflect. Yeah, right? So just wow. just def by entertaining and being that. And that that's when that was born. So mm. that was his character from very early on. And that's and so he still is that guy today. And he tells that whole story. Was, you could tell. In, yeah. it, you could tell, too, when difficult things come up, he gets funny. <clears throat> yeah. Right? It's like, oh, it's getting deep. Let's get funny. And uh, distract, you know, the situation or, or he, take it he, off. Boy, me. he gets into his. I really wanted you guys to get to the kids part because he I, seems like a, a great dad. I, I don't know him, right? He might be just a great actor, bro. His, uh, his like uh, Jalen, mm -hmm. uh, try to be, uh, try to get emancipated. Oh wow, yeah. So, so I there mean, was a there was a struggle there. Oh right? yeah, he, he said he had a struggle with all of them. He, his uh, Jalen, okay, so his oldest is, uh, you know, Will the third, what they call him Trey. His his oldest. Um, he admits that he was the most naive with him, obviously, because he was the first, mm -hmm. right? So he was completely like didn't know what he was doing and learning. And then Jalen is the second one where he's, he's he calls himself, you know, Will 2.0, where he started to piece together. But I mean, that kid wanted to be emancipated. His youngest one, Willow, is the one that he admits that woke him up. And it was she was she committed to a tour with him in Europe where she would get out on stage with him. She wanted to perform some mm -hmm. of that. And after the first night, she came to him and said, um, I'm done. I'm done, Daddy. And he goes, Oh no, honey, we, we still have a whole whatever mm -hmm. to go and stuff like that. And she goes, Don't no, I I don't want to do it anymore. I'm done. And he's like, Oh, honey, we you we've committed to the to the next month of of doing this. And he said the next morning she woke up and she shaved her head completely. Oh wow. and he said that woke him up and at that moment and he realized like that, you know, he wasn't hearing her and what she was trying to say to him, and then he took care of it. But he said that like it completely changed his life at that at that moment. But you're talking about the third kid, yeah. and she's already I think like nine years old or so oh, at, at that point. That signal to hear that yeah, pulls at you, crazy. man. Those Oof. those dad struggles. Well, that's why I wanted you guys to listen to it because it was a real. I mean, I I got all emotional listening to him talk about his mistakes. Do you know how that, old she was when he yeah. when this like was? nine nine. Yeah, and all the kids are all the and so and Jalen was his big moment of what after wanting to be emancipated from him was you remember when they did that movie together um, that flopped. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the sci-fi one. The, it was, yeah, yeah, the war, the world one, or the whatever, the end of the yeah, world yeah, one. Yeah, world, so yeah. he did that with his son, and it, it flopped. It was like his worst movie he ever did. And that was the first one he did with his son. And he's like, he totally felt like he let his son down because he told his son everything to do in yeah. that. And then his son took on the, all the criticism that came. And so that totally 
create a wedge between the two of them. I don't know. And, I don't know why yeah. any parent uh, would put the, make put their kid on a stage in that way. Yeah, but what you mean? You, what if they want to, bro? If exactly. they look, if you're if you're their everything. I, so I, I, still, I mean, what are you gonna do when yeah, your kids grow up and dad, they want to be know? on that's the fine. podcast? No, no, that's fine when they're older. But at that age, I, look, I don't know. I remember being. A yeah, kid. you don't know because if you have because if you're young and talented and you've got talent already and you're begging, to, I, I don't know if I would say no. Like especially if they're talented and they're wanting to follow in your path. I don't know. It's tough. Age. It's tough because uh, here's the two scenarios. One. And this, I think, is the worst scenario. They crush and are loved by everybody, and they're nine, and they're killing it. And then at some point, which happens to all these child stars, they lose that admiration, that love, which they've created an identity around, which you're not going to be like you were when you're nine forever. Now people forget about you, and, oh, I can't imagine what that would do to me as a teenager, yeah. let alone as a man in my 40s. Yeah, you but know? I think that's naive of you to think that, you know, you're going to stop a preteen on their I mean, their dream maybe. Of, of following in your footsteps. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, the, what's the backlash from that? I, it depends on the situation. But <laughs> yeah, I would definitely I mean, It's real easy it. sitting out here for us to say that. It's but, not ideal, right? Not yeah. You see the, the, I, the statistics with, like, child actors and what, you know, happens as a result terrible. of right. that. I, I totally agree. They're terrible. But, yeah, it would be a tough conversation when, you know, they're going to want to rebel if you're going to just be that's like, right. no. And then it may backfire course, even this, more yeah. on you. Of course. So, so, every situation is different. That's a tough one. So, I, I think as generally. a dad, you're over there, you're just praying to God that it doesn't oh, happen. But, I mean, you know, being in it is a whole different... I would try to find a way to do it differently, but, I mean, of course, I'm I'm talking and I haven't been in that situation. Yeah, right. right. But I couldn't imagine getting, like, all these followers on social media as a kid real popular and then you know you go through your your ugly years or you're different now everybody doesn't like you anymore you're not as popular what that would do I mean, to be interesting kid. i guarantee that one of us three yeah. or even including doug one of us four is going to have to handle this one time we all have young kids yeah. right now who aren't on social media that one day will be by the time they are i mean you're already over a hundred thousand followers the podcast getting millions of listens every single month to you or to them you're fucking already super famous wait till they're at an age where they turn it on and you think they're not going to want to be like that with you yeah i don't know <laughs> i know no i mean i think that's and the odds of all of us with all of our kids that yeah. one of them isn't yeah. <laughs> somebody He's having that conversation yeah, in the next know. five years. Maybe I should make my kids my kids feel real insecure. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm nah, saying? I think you'd suck, you know. Uh, yeah. You're not ready. But, Construction. Yeah, okay, no, dude. No, that's a, that's a tough one. Man. Oh, it's gonna be tough. I mean, I know it's gonna be tough. That's you know, talk about one. here. I got a tough one for you guys. <laughs> so let's hear what you guys would have done here. This happened to me last night with Max. So uh we have like this routine. I so I, I I probably take a bath with him probably. I don't know, two or three times a week, right? That's it's part of our routine, yeah, that's right? Cute. That's where you put the toys and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, 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 and I'll do it as long as I can, maybe until he's sixteen or so. We'll probably stop somewhere. Around <laughs> <that>. <laughs> I said that same thing, dude, and then it just got awkward. So yeah, I was gonna to say I don't know what, yeah. I don't know what, what. Hey, right now it's not awkward. He can't yeah. talk. And he's like, that. Yeah, we're just having fun in there. Like playing GI like Joe's, he's the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, we'll, we'll see at what age. My, hey, hey, uh, my, uh, my brother-in-law was would take showers with his son, and then he stopped when his son started saying things like. Daddy's penis has a mustache. Like, <laughs> okay, we're, so, we're done with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, you're too old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, he's not talking, so I feel like it's okay. But listen, so, so this is kind of the routine, and I always love to mess with Katrina because I, I am the one who likes to let him run around naked whenever he wants to. She's just like, he's going to pee on the floor, and he has, so she's right. He's putting newspapers. Right, right. So <laughs> I just think it's funny because uh, there's something about kids – uh, when you you strip them down naked, they just want to go run and and just play and jump and do Freedom. stuff. Yeah, and oh, I think yeah. it's so funny, right? So, I always like as the bathtub is filling up, I strip them down, and I let them run, and Katrina's like chasing them around. Why do you let him do this? You know, and he's running, and he's running away from her. And it's I think so it's, cute. I don't know. I think I it's know, so cute that. and funny. So then then I put him in as it's filling up and stuff, and then eventually I get I, I get naked and then I I get in, and so I'm getting ready to get in. He's he's standing there playing with his toys, and I'm like climbing in the bathtub and I'm I get my just to get to my second foot in and he's just standing there and he's looking at me and he holds his dick and he just starts pissing. Right? No. <laughs> and so I'm I'm in this conflicted moment of do I just say fuck it and get in? You know what I'm saying? It's not like I haven't been in a pool where someone's peed or yeah, something like that before man. or do I like get, get back out? Like, and at least the, it's friendly fire? The, yeah, uh, right? like, the bath is like yeah. already almost full. Do I empty this whole thing of water and then refill definitely it? definitely not dunking my face in this. Yeah, yeah I had yeah. such a weird like conflicted Did moment. You Laugh. I would. It would have been so hard not to laugh. Oh, of of course, I laughed because I was frustrated. Because I was just like, yeah. ah, Max, <laughs> come on, like, it's and all like you, buddy. Yeah, and I'm standing there, and I just ah, fuck it. Hey, I, just, they, I just slide in and get in the bathtub, and just you know, ah, whatever, dude. Oh, bro. <laughs> 
Yeah. So I don't even know what the right move was right there or not. Hey, if you have kids, at some point you're going to I've probably done the same thing. Well, yeah. Know. It's just, it's not, I'm like, okay. And it's not like I haven't been in probably in a, in a pool. Dude, when little anymore. boys figure out they can aim with their pee, it's, there's it's, shit. Yeah, he's not oh, there yet. I mean, over. he's definitely at the. Uh, yeah, my, my buddy's son, they were teaching him how to pee. Oh, you, know, you aim and they throw the Cheerio in the toilet, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And he comes home from work the next day and his son's like, just peeing designs in the carpet, you know. Oh. He, yeah, he could do it, oh, dude. Yeah. So yeah, once uh, once yeah, my kids figured all that out. Like we, uh, I would take them outside and you know take the dogs out, and it was like a ritual that we'd all pee on this tree mm. together. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's just you know we're outdoorsy people. That's mountain. Uh, that's so yeah, we're mountain kind of people. This totally backfired on me, by the way. I think <laughs> I, I bet I bet you were at a public event sometime. In the dude, kid- I told did I tell you this story? <laughs> yeah. So we were walking downtown Santa Cruz. Oh, it's so great. And uh, like. You know, my youngest was like, I don't know, he was maybe maybe two or three and just found this tree and like had had the urge and was and looked at me and then just dropped his pants and started peeing on the tree and like people were just walking <laughs> by. They, at least they were cool and they're laughing, yeah, you know, yeah, and I was just yeah. like, I don't know where he gets us from. You know? I would have died. Yeah. I would have died. You can always tell who's like the parents, right? Because parents just get it. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. That's how I was. Even when we were, we were flying, uh, Sal and I flew out to Arizona this last uh, or week or two ago, right? And when we, uh, some kid in the airport, remember? Oh, yeah. Blah! Yeah, yeah, just screaming, and oh. you know when, when before you have oh, kids, God. you're like, "How?" Oh, no, I mean, that was just like three, after you have kids, yeah, you're three like, years ago, three years ago, I, I was the guy who was just like, "Motherfucker, like, leave! You don't have any family you can leave your kid with yeah. for you know what I'm saying? Why drag him in the airport? But I'm I, never telling myself I'm never gonna be that kid. And then you have a kid, and then you go like, "Ah, oh, poor dad." Hey, we hey we, yeah. we stop yeah. and we look at each other poor like, guy, oh, that yeah. Poor, yeah. That poor been dad, there, dude. Yeah, poor, yeah, you also want to help him sometimes. Hey, can I get you anything? Yeah, you want some gripe water or something? No, dude, I get my 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 baby son. He's so you know how we teach him sign language, right? So he he knows like he does more sign for eat, and, food. and he does yeah more and uh, milk. He does all these signs. He now is boobies. creating yeah he yeah. does this is this yes. is milk boobies, which good. is hilarious because yeah. yes. we'll be out you know and he'll look at Jessica and you'll be like. And she'll be like, ha, 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 ha. you know, he's, oh, it's okay, buddy. We're going to get it. And then he'll just grab so, her shirt, yeah. start pulling it down. The best is when he's going to do it some other lady, dude, who's uh, going to stand in front of somebody. <laughs> yeah. I, I <laughs> Sorry. Or what if I do it? Yeah. <laughs> hey. You know. But anyway, he, uh, he makes up his own, he's made up his own signs for a couple things. <laughs> It's so cool. I feel like this is the dad. Like the dad is like, like, my son's a genius. No, or no, 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 no. Uh-huh. Bro, he's speaking Spanish with his hands no, no, now. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said the whole like, Declaration what? of Independence. Yeah. No, no, no. He he sits there, and if he, if he wants yeah. something, if he wants to try something of someone else's, he does this. He points to his mouth, and we figured it out. So he always does it. So if you have water or you're eating something, you'll he point to, to it, it, and then you'll go like this. Like, put it in my mouth. And then, uh, so there's that one. Then he does my favorite as a sign for music. So, because he, he loves us to put music on. So, mm-hmm. if he wants it on, he looks at us and he does this with his arm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear to God, very Jersey. I swear to God, yeah, dude. In this, listen, I will post the video of it of him doing that. I swear to God, that's what he does. He'll look at you and he'll go. Yeah, like he'll start yeah. fist pumping. I'm like, oh, his, his first word's gonna be ma. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> GTL. Right? Warm yeah. up the sauce. No, yeah. it's, it's, my heart. You know, it was like it's so warm when I saw that. You know, what yeah. that's great. He that's also good. does this thing where if like if like I'll, I'll listen to EDM with him. Jessica puts country on or whatever. But you know how EDM <laughs> always has like this. There's a formula. No, well, it starts off oh, kind of slow and it yeah. builds up and then there's a drop, right? Yeah, yeah. So as it's building up, he'll stop and he'll do this with his arm, and then when the Beat drops or whatever. He does this weird like shimmy, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, like what's his name, Axl Rose from you know, uh, like, yeah, uh, yeah. From, he gets all slinky. Yeah, he does this yeah, thing dude. like this, and we're just we're dying. Dude. Oh we're my just God. dying. Oh, dude. So anyway, see you know that. what? I, you know what I, I wanted to uh, bring up is so you we're all listening, or at least uh, I don't know if you are, Justin. Are you listening to Angel, the that book Angel? I haven't with, uh, started that yet. Okay, no. so it's really good. And it's about angel investing. And so we've, you know, for people who don't know, we, part of our business is also angel investing in companies that we believe are going to, you know, do great later on. It's risky, but it's, there's always a huge, uh, potentially huge payoff. But anyway, we've done this now with like six companies and I started listening to this book. Adam recommended it. And in the book, he really breaks down the things you should look for and like bet on the CEO, not on the, not on the product. And so after listening to it, I'm like, man, we are so 
like the ready fire aim crew. I swear to God, like I <laughs> oh, listen. Yeah. All, it's like we had no idea what we're doing and we're just going, you know. Yeah. And, and now I hear this, I'm like, oh man, we could have totally. <laughs> That's the only way we operate. There's a few, it's true. Yeah. The, you, I, but there's what, value in that, right? There, I think there's tremendous value. In yeah. That. I mean, I, uh, <clears throat> you know, out of all of us, I've probably been the most too that uh, in in reading around real estate stuff, right? And we've been doing that now for almost two years. And there's a lot of things now when I look back, like. I would have done different, you know, as far as choices that we've made as far as investment. Now, overall, I think we've done really well as far as the portfolio and stuff. And I'm very happy with where we're at. But you, I mean, I think you just continue to learn. And I think that we knew enough getting into the angel investing that like, listen, this is a pretty smart strategy. We're, we're, we're advertising with these people anyways. They're paying us to do that. We're kind of playing with house money when you think of it. So, and we can influence the the success of the company because of the size of the show and stuff. So and we know them well, because right. We and we have a relationship with them and we like them. Right. So it's like, okay, this, this kind of makes sense after you can dive deeper into it and you start like, I've been listening to podcasts all around startups and investing. I've been reading, I've reading the books now and I'm going like, okay, and it makes such obvious sense. You brought it up before we got on the podcast that we used to have this saying with uh, gyms, right? And uh, guys like I mean, you worked in Salinas, which is uh, notoriously known as like one of the worst. It's the graveyard. It's like, yeah. So it's, it's known the first as, yeah. club that I ran. We used, they used to send GMs that they wanted to fire there because it was you like- just fail. Yeah, because yeah. You, everyone fails there, right? Uh, and I, I worked. I crushed. At, I worked at Capital McKee, <laughs> which was the considered the, the one of that. the first. It was one of the first five. It was really run down and Dude, shitty. The flagship one that I ran, the first one was Sunnyvale, and the pool was green half the time. Well, right there. So you just out. named Selena, uh, Salinas, Sunnyvale, and uh, Capital McKee, arguably the three worst clubs out of the four hundred and something clubs they have in the entire company. Right. You can make. They that just been around a long time. Old, and <clears> even <throat> even Capital and and Sunnyvale, which are big clubs. They're old. They yeah. didn't, never redid them. It was just yeah. right. So, and the reason why that is is they were so early on that they built the EFT on it, and so they had a, a, a consistent. They didn't need to put any money in it yeah. to try and drive. They didn't care. They didn't care about it, and they and if you could tell they, they treat it that way. So really hard for a minute. Anyways, the point I was making was that we used to say there's no such thing as bad clubs, just bad managers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's true because I, I know you went to Salinas, Larry went to Salinas. You guys both crushed out of that place. I broke records out of Capital McKee. I know you broke records out of Sunnyville. And it is, it's a testament to like the, the leadership of, of these things are so, why would that be any different with a startup company? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Totally. It's like logical. It, yeah. It's very logical and obvious. I've seen way too many state of the art gyms with incredible equipment, great location tank Yeah, because the team and the management suck. So, and it makes perfect sense with any company. It's like, you know, the, you bet on the person and the people, not necessarily on the product or the service. Well, yeah, imagine a, a company that yep. has uh, an incredible product. It's seeing, uh, cra you know, 100% growth month over month the last year or two. You have no idea who the founder is. And then you have Elon Musk that is running in the red, you know, and his, his company's not very successful yet, but he has a vision and an idea. I'm like, who do you bet on? Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, I think everybody would agree. Like, oh, Elon Musk. Well, yeah, of course, because yeah. we all know. But you know, that, you, you know what this reminds me of too? You know, is the character, uh, yeah. When we first came out with our uh, MAPS programs, when we first put them and made them digital and filmed them the whole deal, we one of the biggest things that I think gets in people's ways is the fear that it's not perfect, the product's not perfect. I, the, the market's not perfect. The marketing has to be perfect. Everything has to be absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is you don't know what perfect is yet because the market hasn't taught you yet what works and what doesn't work. And one of the best things you could do is to put something out, look at the response, see where you should spend your time and money, and then just keep you yeah. know, revamping Pay attention it. to the feedback and, and apply what, what makes sense and to make a better product. Yeah, and, and just to take that step. Don't be so afraid. Oh, that's the biggest and if, thing. If you look at some of our original, which they're not out anymore, they've been revamped several times. <laughs> some of our original videos from programs and stuff are I did hilarious. a post on this like two, yeah, two, year, two or three years ago. I did a post about this and what you're saying is the perfect recipe for paralysis by analysis. Yeah. Yep. You know, where you get, and, and there's definitely people listening right now that are entrepreneurs that are guilty of this. And I've worked with plenty of them. Yep. Where they want everything to be perfect before they launch. And the problem with that is that there's somebody else who's willing to do kind of like where we're at, where it's like, oh, I like this idea. Let's just do it. And then we'll learn from our mistakes. So we'll reiterate. We'll get four or five times of being able to reiterate before they even get off the ground with the first one. And that, I mean, timing is everything in business. Mm -hmm. Like that, if you're one of the early adopters or something or first to market, many times, even if your idea isn't perfect or refined, yeah. you'll have tremendous success just because you're first to market. Where if you're last to market, 
your your idea does have to be perfect in order to surpass those people that got you got there first. So mm-hmm. I think this is actually one of the Achilles heels of many well, entrepreneurs that are trying to get started is they're so concerned mm-hmm. about putting something out that yeah. is unfinished or isn't perfect or it's gonna get criticized or whatever. Yeah, yeah. that's a big one is the fear of failure. Which big time. You're gonna here's the bottom line. You're gonna step in the ring. You're gonna get punched in the face. Dude, you're gonna get crit. Just go ahead and like assume that's gonna happen anyway. Yeah, and you know I'm gonna so bear with me guys i'm gonna do a sports analogy you guys ready oh god <laughs> all right so i put my sit belt on real yeah, quick yeah so no it's it's like this right it's like trying to become as the best athlete you can at your sport without ever playing the sport like it's not going to happen right versus i got to go out on the court and play or i got to get on the field and play and then learn through that who's going to learn faster who's going to be better at, uh, at at performing that particular sport right not to, me- not to mention uh, where does the most growth happen in failure. Totally. Yep. So if you're so concerned about not failing and not doing, not realizing that that's one of the best recipes for success. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the, to, to get it, I remember when I, I, I shared this not that long ago on the podcast where I read something about like the, uh, the, the, the number of failures that the billionaires all had, like the, the average number of business failures that every billionaire had had. Oh. And it was like nine or 10. Yeah. Like, that was the average. And obviously some way more than that. And I was young. I was only like 21 or 22 years let me, old. Let me guess. You're like, let me get to my first nine. Figures. Yeah, that yeah. was like yeah. literally. It, it, it completely, bang them out real quick. It was, it really, it reframed the way I looked at any business idea I yeah. had anymore. Instead of me, like if I had an idea, it was like, put it into play right away. Yeah. I, I didn't want to even wait to think, oh, is this a good idea? Or let me ask someone smarter than me. Or let, it was like, no, fuck it. I like it. Let's do it. And yeah. then, because I got to get to 10 <laughs> and I'm not even close. At that age, I only had maybe one or two under my belt. So it was like, you know what? I need to get out there and just do this because if the if every one of these billionaires has a minimum of nine to 10 on their belt and I'm only at one right now, I got a lot of work to do before I get there. Yeah, I, I, I've told this story before. A very impactful client that I had was a, a gentleman who, multi, multi-millionaire. Didn't graduate high school, grew up very poor, rough, you know, upbringing. And I remember asking him, I was like, you know, can you give me like the best advice or whatever? Mm-hmm. And he says, you need to ask me the following question. I said, what? And he goes, ask me how many times I failed. So I said, okay, how many times have you failed? He goes, Sal, I've gone bankrupt three times t- uh, trying to accomplish what I've accomplished. Yeah. And he went through each time that he went bankrupt. And I remember as he was telling me, I thought to myself, I, I don't. I wonder if I would have even tried again after the first one. Like mm-hmm. how devastating that must feel mm-hmm. to bankrupt after you know doing something. So that's the key. And, and now what I would look for is: is this person tenacious, passionate? Do they know what they're doing somewhat? And are they adaptable? That's the big one. Oh yeah, that's the adaptable part. Because Can they work their way through all these problems and, yeah. and address them right away? Yeah, I look at it as an accelerated education. Yes, uh, just getting into it and then uh, getting that immediate feedback and, and altering things to, to make sure, you know, you're, you're moving forward with a successful product, but you have to like, have that, have that immediate feedback in order to even get that. Now, Doug, you're probably the least like this. Yeah. Would you say you're less ready aim fire or would you say you're, how it you- really depends on the situation. I mean, I've, I've entered into a lot of things without a lot of knowledge in the yeah. past. Um, oh, that's right. Oil guy. I forgot. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I actually was so surprised when he had the ad. He's like, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, 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 I've done a like, lot of that things. That hurts, Adam. Ugh. I'm fairly cautious now because I've lost a lot of money yeah. over the years. I mean, I put some money into some investments that I thought at the time were going to make me super rich. Mm-hmm. And you know, I lived in Japan for six and a half years. I worked and saved my money. I had I had purchased stock in Microsoft, in, in uh Starbucks. I had like these stocks and I bought a triplex up in the Seattle area and I sold everything to get into some investments that oh, ended wow. up going to zero. Oh. So yeah, I've taken <laughs> risks and yeah. I've lost it all. So if I had to, if, if you were to draw a line down the middle and say like the four of us, uh, you know, the super conservative or like, you know, slow to slow to start. And then the other two, the, then you have the other side ready, aim, fire away. I would say that Sal and I are probably too extreme on the ready aim fire. Like, there's no thinking involved at all. It's just like, I like that. Let's do it. And then I would say you and Justin are a little bit more on the conservative side, which is why we make such a beautiful yeah. balance of of us. Having just, kids made yeah, me more probably. conservative. That's for sure. Because now I'm like, well, if I fail this time, you know, no college for you. You know, so I, know. I, had to, <laughs> so I thought about it a little differently. But I mean, I I drove down to Palm Desert and took at the time. Let's see how old was I? 21. I had saved. Hundred thousand dollars of my own money, mm-hmm. which was you know I didn't go to college right, so I worked from eighteen till then, saved all that cash, 
left and put it down as part owner of this gym and let the di- let it roll. And I almost lost it. I, luckily, I came out flat. I didn't make anything. I didn't lose anything. Yeah. So I've always kind of been that way. After having kids, I became a little more conservative because now it's other people are depending on, which is why I tell people when they ask me advice, I always ask them, do you have kids? Are you, no, I don't. Take the risk now because mm-hmm. right now, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. What are you gonna do? You're gonna fail. Big deal. Go get a job. You'll you'll get back on your feet. It's not that not that yeah. big of a get deal. Get your nine out before you have your kid if you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally, hundred percent. So, speaking of companies that crush and took risks, right? I was supposed to talk about Butcher Box. What a great example, right? Here's a company that said we're gonna make meal, we're gonna make grass fed meat delivery, bring it bring it to people's doors, eliminate middlemen, make it's it affordable. Be, it's gonna be a subscription service. Who the hell bought meat on a subscription service before? Yeah, and they blew up. Oh, crushed. I wish we would have caught. There's a couple companies. I this wish. Year. Yeah, Fiori and then Butcher Box are for sure two companies that we we were we've been with now for like four years or more, and I wish that we were in a place capital wise to have invested in them because I uh, didn't Butcher Box come out with their valuation a couple just a year or two ago and it was it was up there I thought I saw an article on it. Do you well, guys they're just they just they they do so well they're so good and they've proven. The subscription model for this kind of stuff, which which companies wouldn't have touched before. Speaking of which, what'd you guys think about the salmon? Bites? I was just gonna say, I okay. So one of the challenges with eating on the go, if you like trying to take care of yourself, is protein, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, it's either a protein shake, a bar, which okay, that's fine, I guess. But I'd rather have whole natural foods. What can I chew? What can I eat that I don't have to store in on ice or put in a fridge? That's not protein. They, the salmon bites are vacuum sealed. You eat them right out the bag. You can mm-hmm. take them with you anywhere. High in protein. They're hella good. I'm like, this is one of the best like on-the-go meals that I've I had. I thought even Justin liked it. Did you like I it? I did just like it, actually. Yeah, I had a you really did like it, huh? I really did. Like, And in, in, again, like everybody knows my aversion to fish, but... Um, like I, I'm a big beef jerky guy and like smoked meats and, um, it just had really good smoke flavor and, and, uh, it was actually pretty delicious. It was yeah. amazing. And I'm with you, Sal, like <clears throat> anybody who's ever, you know, like really tracked their protein and tried to be consistent with that. It's hard. That's one of the hardest things to, uh, be consistent with, especially when you're on the go or if you yeah, didn't prep you can travel meals. with carbs. That's easy. Yeah. But yeah. Protein. Oh, yeah. And you can pull over at any gas station and get a whole host of carbs. Yeah. But when you pull over to a gas station, what does everybody eat? Like protein wise, there's beef nothing. Jerky. Yeah. It's either <laughs> yeah. Beef yeah, jerky. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's yeah. like, yeah. or some nuts, which is mostly fat and a little bit of protein. Yeah. This is like your only two options. Yeah. It's yeah. really tough to get a good amount of, you know, 20, 30 grams, a serving of, of protein, but having that would be amazing. And Doug, you just, all you had, yeah, it was in the refrigerator. That was it, right? Is That's it. it. Wow. I don't know if you even need to store them in the refrigerator. You don't. I yeah, think because they're, they're smoked. smoked yeah. They're smoked they're and they're sealed. vacuum sealed. So it dries, okay, yeah. well, explain mm-hmm. that to me. So if I'm somebody- not sure why they sent them to us over on ice, but maybe because to they're keep out. fresher. Yeah, because maybe it's hot or whatever else. So you be. really think that you could store that? I, I don't can, know for sure. Well, let's double check, yeah. but I know you can eat. You, now, what, I know well, yeah, you could break, do this with break smoked this down salmon. to me. So if something is smoked and vacuum sealed, you don't necessarily have to. Yeah, you can buy smoked salmon at the like Costco, for example. It's similar to jerky. It preserves it longer. It's similar like how beef jerky lasts because it's dry, it's smoked, there's not and it's vacuum sealed no bacteria now once you open the package now is that because the smoke right. takes all the moisture out of the meat and so like that so there's not a there's not a, there's a lower chance of bacteria building up on it like what it what it, what is it about it because obviously if you cooked if you like did a pan sear salmon and then you just let it sit out so i'm going to talk out of my ass now but i'm going to guess <laughs> so i don't know quite know but you know when they make ceviche and they it's like raw fish but they use the acids from the lemons and stuff yeah, that, that kind of kind of cooks it kind of cooks it I think the smoking process is similar. It does something similar. I feel like Doug's more qualified to talk about this than you. I are. don't know, but they used to preserve uh, like fish and meats with salt, for yeah. example. And one of the things you do with a smoked salmon, for example, is you put it in a brine, and then you there smoke you it. Mm. And so I think the combination of those two things cause the meat to yeah. last a long well, time. And that's what I'm asking, or what I'm guessing, is that it has something to do with probably pulling the moisture out of it, because yes. it's the moisture where the bacteria would probably grow on, right? Or well, I would it, think it's so. It's moisture, but salt also prevents. That's a good right. point. Salt prevents uh, bacteria. So in, uh, sailors would salt meat and then travel. Wow, you'll have to look that up, because that makes it even cool. I mean, 
even if you just had to have it in your refrigerator and then you took it on the go, it still would be fine. It'd yeah. still be amazing. But if it doesn't need to be stored like that, that's even crazy. Now, I would bet that once you open it, though, you probably need to eat it within a certain period of time. Sure. So once you've mm-hmm. opened it. But sure. anyway, it's uh, it's natural and it's good. and it's So high protein. good. Yeah, it's actually and surprisingly good. Totally. And for me, it's like traveling and eating protein. Now I got to eat foods that, and I'm, you know, you guys know I'm like, I have sensitive gut. So yeah. it becomes a pain in the butt. Like, all right, what do I pick so or whatever? Th- to answer your question about the salmon bites, however, they do need to say stay. Uh, is it frozen or refrigerated? No, frozen. Okay. Okay. So they're super fresh. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I don't know why the ones you buy like at Costco can stay in a box. Well, they probably so, are putting a bunch of preservatives and yeah, shit in there. To do yeah. So that I would imagine, imagine you take they... it and then take it with you, and as long as you eat it within twenty four hours, yeah, or more, it's more dry. Uh, because you remember the bites were quite moist and yeah, not, not they so weren't dry. Jerky. Yeah. No, they, they were not. Oh like yeah, jerky. no, it wasn't. I mean, you guys say jerky, but it, it's you're going to give people the wrong impression. No, it's, it's not. Speaking dry of the small moist bites. Um, <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> are you, let's hear this way. Wait, let's hear are this you, Are you going to bring this up finally? I've been seeing this in the <laughs> yeah, notes. I'm what, like, yeah, what yeah. I have on here. I've been, here. It's like it's like a month since I've been trying to bring this. up. This happened a while ago, but there's been like like protest marches around. Have you guys heard about this? It's a small like small dick marches. What? No. Yeah. no yeah. I, they're well, trying to bring I was, awareness. I was, I was the only one that we got weren't invited. Email. Come <laughs> on, guys. You're the only one. You were there invited. with yeah. me. <laughs> How dare you? I've been in the locker. You're the only one on that email list, bro. I, I tried to join and they, they kicked Come me out. Come on. Yeah, yeah, no. I don't, I don't know who cut. started this, but it's like a whole. It was pretty hilarious. Like the signs alone, if you just look it up online, it's like so, all dongs go to heaven, and it's <laughs> it, it's really just trying to like destigmatize like these guys that have like small dicks that really you know are. Or get shamed for it, Doug. You got to pull up a, yeah. uh, a a clip of the. Vi- so it's a, a protest, hilarious. a march. What it's is a it? march, and so okay. like this happened like in New York and L. A. We have and, small like, penises, yeah, but big hearts. Yeah, exactly, wow. exactly. So yeah, they're wearing like hot dog uh, outfits and. Um, yeah, trying to bring awareness to to the fact that you know some guys uh, we live in a really weird they got time little right shrimps now. and really uh, and, and they're proud. Activists That's- hold small dong march to end shaming. Of tiny penises. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. Wow. That's hilarious. Small dick, big heart. By yeah. the way- I'm on the opposite side. We need to bring back more shaming. Justin said that the other day. I did say- That was one of my fit tips. Yeah, I was, was like, I said that so long ago. He did a fit tip. Did you see that fit I tip? Did. Yeah. He says, find shaming. some friends that will shame you. Shaming. But I'm going to tell you something. You're going to want to find some friends that still do it. And I'm going to tell you why. It's beneficial for you to get friends that keep it real. But I mean, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that, the point is you want to have, like, real accountability uh, with people around you so you know that they're being honest, you know, right? This, like, that's a better way to say it. This whole, like, small penis thing. So I had a buddy uh, years ago. Oh, yeah. You, I have a friend, huh? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a friend with quote, a really unquote, small penis. Uh, <laughs> listen. <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell us about this you've, friend, Sal. You've, you've seen me. Yeah, so, tell, tell, so stop tell bullshitting. You know tell us about this friend of So listen. Here's, no, this is what's funny. I had a buddy. This was his strategy. So you know how guys always joke around, oh, I got a big one. Uh, so right. He's like, why yep. do you guys do that? He goes, say you have a small one, and then they're pleasantly surprised. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's not are revolutionary. A lot lower. Everybody knows that. I thought that was brilliant. No, it's not that brilliant. It's I thought obvious. that was really smart. Everybody knows that. Do you they know. really? Yeah, yeah, of course. Is that yeah. well known? Yeah, 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 it's super well known. You, <laughs> Adam has a book. Over, <laughs> yeah. You, un- you under promise and over deliver. I mean, that's been yeah. that's been. A, Listen, a, I'm only in the last thirty seconds. She's like, well, that wasn't yeah, bad. That was a minute and a half. That's exactly that right. Was three times as long as you told me. Yeah. yeah that's so this just happened. Was it pretty big, Doug? As far no pun no pun intended. Oh, it was actually tiny. Um, it was a small march. Small march. Is that what it says to you? Uh, I'm not seeing now, I, I, attended. I, I heard that they re, they've been reporting on these things prematurely. <laughs> my dog uh, is not a choking hazard. <laughs> oh my god! He's even got his handle. You see that? He's got yeah. his Instagram handle next to it too, yeah, so, so you can look him up. I, I did respect though for these guys that actually like go out in public and are having signs and you know like that's pretty. Bold. There's, a, there's a girl. Like, there's a girl with him. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, buddy, don't bring your girl to that march. What's wrong with you, dude? <laughs> That's well, hilarious. I love it. Yeah. This. So speaking of uh, of uh, penises, uh, I'm having a date night tonight with the wife. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's right, honey. Hopefully yours get seen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> About to feed it. No. Right? So we we've been doing this like twice a month where we do oh, good for you date guys. night. And it's such a you have to do this if you have kids, especially yeah. if you have little kids. There's no spontaneity in the date night. It's not going to happen. You got a baby. What are you going to do, right? So. Twice a month we schedule it, and what we've been doing is going to like really nice restaurants or you know fun experiences, great conversations, great connecting. Tonight we're not doing any of that. We're going to a bar. I have not gone to a straight up bar with the wife 
in so long. So we're going to eat beforehand at home. Okay, this and is then a, go get some, go get some drinks. This I find this a weird idea. What? Why a bar? It's so when and just who's, who's, what who's, kind who, of bar? Is this whose like idea a, is this? Yours or hers? Like a dive bar? Or are we talking about like a nice swanky? No, there's a nice bar uh, up in Campbell. I don't know if I should say. It. Well, well, it's all right. This will air after I'm already there. Vesper. Have you guys been to Vesper? Hmm. Great, uh, Doug. Remember we yeah, went there? Yeah, I was there last week. Oh, were you? Yeah. Oh, what cool. were you doing there? Doug, Doug, Picking party. I was having dude. a drink. Huh? I was having a drink. <laughs> By yourself? No, with the girlfriend. Oh. Oh, oh shit, it's on air. Oh, oh everybody. Oh, my goodness. Doug, That's right. He hasn't changed his you Facebook profile. So Until he changes his dude. Facebook profile, doesn't, hey, doesn't count. You just broke everybody's heart, <laughs> That's Doug. it, though. Oh, just, sorry. They're too sorry slow to that. the gun. No, no, no. Yeah, you're you're that's losing a, Doug. That's the two wife thing. It's okay. He could do that. Stop. He's still in there. Don't get him in trouble. He's the most loyal man you've ever met in your life. No, we did this when Jessica and I first started dating. I'm not an alcohol guy. I don't like drinking or whatever. She likes different kinds of beers. And you guys know this. Yeah. If we go out, she's always like, no, I want that. Yeah, she's whiskey. like my whiskey friend. Sometimes. Oh, yeah, dude. She yeah. embarrasses me because not because she's embarrassing, because I'm embarrassing because we'll order drinks. I was going to say, you embarrass yourself. Correct. Right, bro. He's, he's, because the, the way wife orders some scotch and he's like, I'll take the one with bro, the yeah. purple umbrella. Can, we, hey, <laughs> can hey. sweeten it up somehow? Totally. Like, you know yeah. how many times the waiter brings oh, I the bet. drinks I bet and every gives, time. gives bet mine every to time. hers and her to me and we switch them? Can I have some whipped cream on this? No, I'm sorry. I'm I'm the one with the watermelon mojito she's the yeah. one with the uh, although i will admit where you and i you and i stayed out on together and we did the same thing i didn't know that was going to come back looking like that we we, when we we had dinner when we were in arizona come on bro you're the same way you like the fruit and we stuff had too. A, uh, what was it what was it we had it was like um it was a it was a blueberry Sex lemon drop. Yeah. yeah, we knew that was gonna happen. Yeah. Blueberry lemon well, I, drop. No, I, I, hey, it came in like a little martini glass yeah. and it had yeah. sugar around the rim. Yeah. A little, the guy you guys was are like, lucky guys, I wasn't there. Said, I, I and it was just the, him and I, by the yeah, way. It was just <laughs> so, <laughs> Sal and I having dinner. Oh together man, like that. That was, yeah, so. I gotta take a picture. We, of we you. were holding hands. Shamed like, you. Yeah. No, so we, so we did this a lot when we first started dating because she would introduce me to like different whiskeys and scotch and beers and it's a lot of fun. We enjoyed it and then we went to a couple speakeasies. So we found. A couple here in San Jose? No, there was one. San Francisco. Uh, I was say, there was yeah. one. Oh God, where do we go? Money around here. I, uh, we went somewhere. It might have been. Dude, the in, coolest ones are in Chicago. I can't wait to really? see you guys someday. So it might have been in Seattle. I don't remember, but we went to the Speakeasy, and the the people, the bartenders making the drinks, are so talented mm -hmm. at making these drinks and presenting them. Like, I, I don't know that you could do things like they did with ice and with like rind of the lemon and like a certain plant. It, and it's really enjoyable. There's legit schools out there, you know, for, for bartending it, that like, yeah, it, it's like a lost art though. There's not a lot of really swanky. Right. Nice it was so fun. That, what was that bar we went to? In Austin. In Austin. Yeah, yeah. Was it Jefferson or something? Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Yeah, Roosevelt. Oh, was that the one? I, I remember, I think it had a glass of whiskey, but they had one of those like clear ice cubes yes. that uh, had was infused with uh, a, a couple different um, types of fruits that would like, as it would melt, it would kind of uh, emanate into the drink. Yeah. So, so, good. so what we like to do is we go and then we'll order something different on the menu and share and enjoy and have fun, loosen up and... So anyway, we're gonna do that tonight. So, which which brings me to this. Where's the Zbiotic guys? There's none in the back. There's probably one. I could assist you with that commercial. You don't need just to assist. Keep going. This is I true. Just keep on this going, guy. Because <laughs> I, I went in the back and there's none. So you, both you guys or yeah. somebody's taking all. That's the Justin. Justin takes. It. I did. Yeah. I, I mean, culprit. I've taken a few. He takes few, the pure. He takes the Zbiotic. He takes the peanut butter magic spoon. I don't even need it. I mean, I, I should just leave it for you guys. I just know that I'm fine, you know, because I'm I'm the real alcohol. So now <laughs> does uh, I'm not a wimp. So Katrina yeah. doesn't actually use it. I, she's like she's got a like a an iron liver or whatever like that, and it runs in the Her family. And Justin too, both yeah. of them. Yeah, so she like although I mean I've shared Courtney stories though, before where she did it and then she wasn't feeling so hot. And I'm like, why do you have to be like the tough girl who doesn't need the Z biotic? It's yeah. like meanwhile why? you're like me, you, you and I. Oh, like, yeah. we'll drink a, a if a, I'm even a, thinking a about. Yeah, we'll have hangover. If I am thinking about having that's a, but that's also why I've really this is this is why Zbiotic has been so big for me is that I don't always want to get fucked up, but sometimes I would like to have a glass of wine with my wife at dinner or enjoy one cocktail and watch yeah. a game, and I just don't do that because it always throws me off. But now with the Zbiotic, even if I'm just going to have one or two drinks, I can actually enjoy just one or two drinks. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. if I'm going to get fucked up, it's a you have to do that, right? It's but. I'll even have it when I'm just going to have a drink or two because even one or two drinks affects me negatively. And if I if I don't have the Z-Biotic and I don't, if I or if I do use the Z-Biotic, I don't yeah, have any of those feelings. I'm the same way. I'm just like you. I'm really sensitive to alcohol. And if I have a couple drinks, I'm not going to have a hangover the next day, but I'm going to feel 
down and a crappy. And if I'm going to work out that day, it fucks up the workout. So yeah. that's why I'm annoyed because again, I went in the back and it's there's nothing. There's none to be found. So hey, I meant I meant to tell you that um, I was so pretty was impressed pretty. with the feedback that you got from your uh, transgender post. Oh, you're talking about the uh, the UPenn athlete? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know you were going to do that, and I you know it popped up in my thread, and I went, oh wow, Sal went there, and I clicked on it, and I read well, it. You know, so yeah, you know, present it because I didn't read your post. Uh, so <laughs> well, how did you, how did you, you phrase this? Like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, he wrote too much. I don't want to read it. No, it, you know it's a really <laughs> like, um, this is a, a, a platform for pictures you know what sucks about this is that the there's this movement that goes so far it it, it's actually gaslighting and it actually hurts the very people that pretend to help so that's kind of what i talked about so you have this upenn athlete who was a competitive swimmer when they were uh male so they're they're born right male transitioned to female competed as a female and smashed records, right? Destroyed records. Oh, the One of the records they broke was by 38 seconds, which in yeah. competitive swimming is like- Crazy. It's like outlifting the next no guy by 150 advantage. pounds, yeah, right? Yeah. It's, just, it's just ridiculous. And it's really, and so then I listened to her in an interview. So she got interviewed about this whole thing and she was visibly uncomfortable. You could tell that she was, she kind of felt bad about it. She's getting a lot of heat, which makes me feel really bad for her. I felt very empathetic. And so what, what I basically said was this, look, we created gender categories in sports specifically to give women, cisgender women, uh, opportunities to place, get scholarships, and also to prevent serious injury in certain sports, right? You're not going to put uh, cisgender women in a boxing ring with, with cisgender men or same thing with football or anything with heavy contact because the risk of injury is so high, right? And then of course- Placings give them opportunities to place. Like if you look at the records in sprinting or lifting or you know whatever, you'll see that the top women don't even rank anywhere near where you'll find the men, and so that means that there's no opportunities for things like scholarships and placings. So that's why those categories exist. And the part that annoys me is there's this movement that is you know pro trans rights, and what they're doing, in my opinion, is they're hurting rights those rights because they're taking people, they're putting them in these categories, and there's a clear and distinct biological advantage. doesn't matter if you transitioned, if, especially if you went through puberty as a male. Yeah. Many of those those uh, those advantages, they're, done, they're there. So you, you can get rid of some of them with hormone therapy, but you're not going to get rid of all of them. Like if you transitioned me to a especially female- Especially he was a competitive sw- swimmer already as a male. Yes. So you, it's not like you transition and then you got into a sport, you learned the sport. It's like you had been already competing- you know, at, at a higher level when you were... Uh, well, look, you could put my sister on all the anabolic steroids you want. You could put me on estrogen and testosterone blocker. I'll still be stronger than her. I'll lose a lot of my sure. advantages, but a lot of them are permanent. And there's even evidence that shows that even if they don't go through puberty, that there's still some advantages that just exist on a genetic level. And so what that does is it it basically destroys the idea of the category. So it's like you either destroy, get rid of the categories, let everybody compete together, in which case... Sorry, ladies, you're not going to place at, at, at high at all in, in competitive sports. Uh, or we maintain the categories uh, for the reason why they exist in the first place. And don't gaslight everybody. This is what damages the, mm-hmm. the, the, the trans right movement is that it's, it's, it's blatant gaslighting. No, 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 there's no advantage. No, there, of course not. It's, it's all the same. And anybody with any logic or eyeballs can see, like, uh, this is that's not true. There's total. Well, advantage. you presented it really well because uh, you, we you typically get, uh, you know, somebody is triggered and goes, and I really didn't see that. I only saw, I saw one guy on there that uh, you you fired back at, but it wasn't he, he. He didn't even come aggressive. He was just trying to. He said he, it's he was such trying a, to cor- correct you. He, he on, said it's such a complex issue, and I don't know where I. It's like it's not complex. You have a clear. All things being equal, because yes, there are women that could outlift me as well, but in the same category of, of uh, elite athleticism. No, it was the guy who tra- the guy who talked about that it's a social construct. He tried, oh yeah, that, he that, take down yeah, that. but that had no point, right? That's not what I was talking about. I know. I'm not trying to debate. That, that. was like the only person that I saw that yeah. try to take it a different direction. Everybody else. Um, yeah. And, and you, again, this is why you don't see trans males doing anything like this. They're not crushing records because when a woman transitions to a man. And competes, you're going to get 
crushed for the most part just because those inherent even though they're on testosterone and everything yeah it's just interesting because it's becoming more prevalent right and like nobody really has uh any good answers in terms of like how they're going to structure this going forward yeah, you, you can you can be empathetic and honest at the same time because i have a, there's people that'll say like oh you know it's not fair and it's not first of all it's not fair to cisgender women this there's a this is an assault on them uh because that's why those categories well, that's exist. the concern right and that and we need to get more of those voices to can like that are concerned about that and losing scholarships and all that like you know you have to consider that i yeah, think it's, it's how are we going to reconcile that i think it's happening i think that i mean obviously this is kind of in our space and so we see every time it happens and it's 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 starting to happen more that the average person knows more about it and i think you're starting well, so the, i think you're going to start to see so a, i have some speculation because the Olympics just announced that they're eliminating weightlifting, one of the core yeah. weightlifting sports, or boxing. Yeah, one of the core sports. Get sport. out of here, dude. Now I'm wondering, does it have anything to do with the fact that they allowed that athlete to compete and they got all that blowback, and so they can't reverse out? So they're gonna start eliminating sports. So where they're just eliminated because it's controversial. Well, I mean, boxing. Could you imagine if they if they did this in boxing, how ter how hard it would be to watch? Well, was this oh, a vote? Yeah. Do you guys know? Or was, was I don't know how they come up with their. They got it. It has to be a vote. You can't think just bro. One they replaced gets... weightlifting with skateboarding Why? and something else. It was really weird. Dude, those are two staple events like why would you get rid of those That's i don't know crazy. i have no idea but yeah, yeah i think i think we need we can be empathetic and honest and you know that's it like feelings matter but when it comes to objective truth like this just that's it's a fact so you know we gotta either we keep the categories and we maintain the integrity of why those categories exist or we eliminate the categories. It's really the only two options, not this gas. Or you create a new you category. Third one. You create. Yeah, you create a Which new category. I would, right. I would prefer to see that, but yeah, that's you need a lot of uh, competitors. I don't know if they have enough competitors in that direction. You, you would if you category. made the category. You would. You would have eventually, enough right? To yeah, I think. But that's the first step. So I think that somebody needs to lay that groundwork down because I think that's the only way to really solve it. Totally. Hey, real quick, look, you're a fitness and health person, but you like soda. Of course you do. It's delicious. Well, you got to try Olipop. This is a very low-calorie soda-type drink. Now, it tastes like the sodas you grew up drinking as a kid, except it's actually good for you. In fact, these are gut health soda, so they don't have a bunch of added sugars. There's no artificial sweeteners, and there's compounds in these drinks that will help you with your gut health, and I believe each can is something like 35 calories, so it's really good, really low-calorie. It's a great Treat, and again, it's good for your gut. Go check out Olipop. Head over to drinkolipop.com forward slash mind pump and then use the code mind pump for 20% off plus free shipping. Again, go check them out. It's good stuff. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Rebel Hammond. What are your thoughts on bear crawls as they seem to be total body, but you don't see them often in the gym? Oh, good old bear crawls. It's not a like strength exercise it's not a build muscle or burn body fat necessarily exercise i mean you burn calories you will make your body stronger it's, it's not as easy as it looks but it's really good at getting the right and left sides of your body to communicate through kind of a fundamental you know kind of human pattern right where when for example when you're walking you'll notice that your arms move differently than your legs or opposing to your legs they contralateral. Get that contralateral right so I used to like to do stuff like this for my clients before we would start the workout and it would help them perform better in exercises that were like split stance or one arm exercises. Mm -hmm. And then there's some core stability uh, component here because you do have to have good core stability to get the arms and legs to communicate properly. You know, that's I think the best way to use it. And I've, <clears throat> I like to kind of take clients through that, um, just like a real slow approach with it to make sure they can even, um, maintain that position uh and and not allow their hips to rotate especially and uh get that communication started from right to left as as each intention with the right arm and the left leg kind of coming together and forward it takes some some people a lot of coordination uh that they're not used to which will really help them in terms of their overall function and athleticism. So uh, there's lots of benefits to it in terms of like uh, crawling patterns are, are pretty much of a fundamental human movement uh, that a lot of people just kind of skip through and being intentional with it has a lot of carryover. But also, I mean, you could use these for conditioning as well, which I've done with athletes. Uh, and it's really difficult after a while to go an extended uh, length of doing these bear crawls too. 
So I think it's a, a really underrated movement. Um, you did a really good video, Justin, on the Instagram, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. uh, on a fit tip. Was it a fit tip you did? Yeah, I think I did the fit tip. Well, that was a silly one. I did one on YouTube that was a little more. Oh, it wasn't um, it wasn't on in Instagram depth. where you did the bear crawl? I, I did one on Instagram, but it was, it was like a silly one where uh, I'm like growling and shit. So um, <laughs> that's not part yeah. of it. I mean, to answer the question though, like why don't we see them in a gym? Well, one, I think they they take up a lot of space, right? To do like a full crawl, like you know, if you're going to go 20 yards, not every gym, and you probably feel kind of silly doing you, that. People feel silly doing it. The other thing is that I think that they're they're used mostly in, for conditioning when I don't think that's where the real value is. I think if you watch the video that Justin does, um, if you learn to move like that versus just doing it as cardio, which that to me, when I see bear crawls done, it's rare. And I definitely tell you, if I see someone doing them proper, I know that they, they're either a trainer or they got a good trainer who's teaching them that because it's one of the, it's like seeing a good plank. Yeah. It's like one of those, these, these fundamental movements that you should probably incorporate into your lifestyle, but most people don't even do them properly. And then when you see someone who's doing them, they, you know, they really get it. Either they've been trained or they're a trainer themselves. So I think that's part of why you don't see them in the gym is because I think people look at them and think they're just a conditioning tool. Yeah. And if you're and they're like, well, there's I can just get on the treadmill and run on the treadmill. Yeah. Why would I crawl down the it's, middle of the gym? It's just not a sexy like, you know, I'm not working a specific part of my like exercises like that don't necessarily work a specific part of the body um, or make you really tired and sweat. Often you don't see them in gyms. But and I'm glad you said there's a there's a way to do them. Right. When you do them properly, like you could just get on the floor and go, but you're not really going to gain a lot of the benefits of how to do a bear crawl properly. When you do them right, you're stabilizing your core. You're not allowing your pelvis to, to, yeah. to twist everywhere, and you're staying stable as you're moving. Now you're getting things to communicate, and you're really activating the core um, in, a, in a really effective way. So done right, they're really effective. Done wrong, and it's just a way to well, move. I also think too it's a it's a great progression from like a bird dog, which yeah. bird dogs, you know, for your average person, you look at that like what's the value there? Yeah. Like it just doesn't look like you're going to get a sweat. You're you're really working any kind of strength move, but um, you know that 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 communication right to left and and also the anti rotational uh, focus with that is uh, a lot of the value of what you're receiving. Well, th this is why one one of my favorite. Uh, analogies ever given on this podcast was the one that Sal did almost five, six years ago now when he talked about the, you know, amp and speakers, right? The whole CNS thing. And this, to me, this is a great example, like how, what are some basic exercises that I can do to improve my CNS and the, the communication that my, my amp has to my speakers? This is one of the ways for you to invest in that. Like, if you want to work on how your CNS communicates to your muscles and improve upon that, doing things like the bird dog or doing the bear crawl are incredible. But doing them with intent is where the value is, not just doing it to burn calories or to sweat. If you go well, into that's what like, it's for. Yeah. yeah, you lose the value there if you do that. But if you actually do it properly, then it can really improve on the way that you your CNS communicates yeah, to your it's muscles. It's no different than taking a hammer and trying to use it on a screw. Like, can you hammer a screw into the wall? You can, but it's not going to be nearly as effective as if you use like a, a drill, right? So use the right tools for the job and then use them properly. And to get the that contralateral communication, to get the right kind of core stability, it's a great exercise to build a lot of muscle and burn a lot of calories. Not really. However, does getting your body to communicate better contralaterally, does activating your core in a way where it's more functional and stable during other exercises, could that improve your ability Absolutely. to build muscle and burn body fat? Yes. And, and I want to say that because I don't have to sell it, right? right? I know people watching are like, oh, build muscle, burn body fat, <sighs> not for me. No, you, you do these things better. Uh, then you're able to do those exercises that are the big muscle builders and the fat burners uh, much more effectively. And By the way, as, as far as bird dogs, sorry to interrupt, but as far as bird dogs is concerned, you know that was one of my favorite exercises to help people with low back pain? Mm -hmm. If somebody mm -hmm. came to me with low back pain, seven out of ten times, bird dogs would make the pain uh, much better immediately. That's was such an effective exercise for that. Well, those both those movements are, I mean, I know you sold it for the fat loss community and the muscle building community. But man, if you're an athlete, that that's a for sure yeah. foundational thing you should be able to do and do well. And that will really translate into whatever sport you're doing, because when you're doing sports, that's what you the, the ability to for your body to communicate from left to right on each side and do that seamlessly 
is uh, is and, only going to improve your body. Yeah, so yeah, you have I, full control. The first time I learned this was years. I was embarrassed. Well, I, I wasn't embarrassed. I, I'm looking back. I'm embarrassed. But back then, it was such a great learning experience. I had a physical therapist. She was so good. Her name was Lori, and she was phenomenal at what she did. And she was she would do things that sometimes I had no idea what the value was. And I remember she was training a young athlete. And she had this young athlete stand and do a one-arm shoulder press with the right arm. But as the right arm went up, the left knee went up and it went down. And I remember watching this as a meathead trainer, right? And I thought, what a stupid exercise. You can't press a lot of weight. Like, where's the value in that? And, and I asked her afterwards, like, what was the value? And I respected her enough to ask her. So what's the value of that? Because he's not really lifting a lot of weight, not building a lot of muscle. And she said, oh, it's contralateral communication. And I said, well, what does that mean? And she goes, well, do me a favor. She goes, walk down the hall. But, in, but instead of your left arm moving up when your right leg steps forward, move yeah. your right arm with your right leg. Do and the same together. And, yeah. and I was like, kind of oh, awkward. my God. And she goes, now try and walk and run that way. And I couldn't <laughs> do it. She goes, that contralateral movement is so fundamental to performance. So what I was training with him was getting that to communicate better because of running and all this other stuff and when we do the other lifts. And I was like, oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Next question is from Natalie Lawrence. Is it dangerous for short or slender people to lift weights? I'm 137 pounds and 5'2", and I've been advised by a physio to not lift heavy and by a nurse not to lift at all. There must be a way Crazy. for shorter people to lift without causing joint damage. All right, so, so first off, well, first off fire your fucking this. physio yeah. and find yeah. another nurse. Well, okay, so, so to be fair, we don't know what the whole situation is. Well, yeah. But- so if it's, like a, it's, if it's an actual physiotherapist, we don't know what the situation is. Now, nurse has no knowledge or experience on exercise, so I wouldn't take that advice. That being said, here's the deal. Uh, exercise, any form of exercise could be either dangerous or very yeah, safe. It's so moldable. It's how it's well, applied yeah, and is it applied appropriately. It has nothing to do with though your height and being slender or not. Nothing. No, no, no. Zero. Nothing. Those factors that don't is even apply. Nothing. Now you're right. If she has some crazy condition that she's not disclosing right now, yeah, uh, yeah. then yeah. There, but if we're going to go off of the information we have right now and being slender, short, tall, fat, wide, none of that has anything to do with whether you should lift heavy or not. No, lift heavy and resist, at all. resistance training is one of the greatest forms of exercise because of how moldable it is. I could train a, you know, I could train a, a paraplegic with resistance training. I could train a kid with resistance training, an old older person, a younger person, an athlete. It's all in how it's applied, choosing the right movements. Are they stable? Do they own that movement? Is it the appropriate resistance? If you do all the right stuff, it's not only is it safe, okay, but you want to talk about your joints, you will strengthen your joints. Yeah. They, you will improve your it's longevity. It's crucial you do it yes. uh, for strengthening your joints and, and alleviating pain. And so that's why this this advice is so wrong to me. It's just like they're not setting you up for success later on. You're going to have all kinds of problems by avoiding it. So. Yeah, this this is the same. It's in, along the same lines of uh, don't lift weights if you're too young because you're going to stunt your growth. Or women shouldn't lift weights. That was around for a long time. No, no, no. If you're a woman, you shouldn't lift weights. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the, appli- the the value that proper application of resistance training has is literally for everyone. In fact, when you're th- when you're looking at exercise therapy, you know pre surgery, post surgery, injury rehab, the primary form of of exercise that they use is resistance training. Now they may not be using dumbbells and barbells, but they're using resistance bands or body weight or control and stability. But it's all resistance training. It's yeah. it, it, it's literally the safest form of exercise you could do if applied properly. Well, and understand too, there is a very big difference between lifting heavy and lifting shitty, right? So, like, if someone yeah, good point. A lot of people think that oh, well, the reason why like so, I'm assuming the argument that this physio has to be trying to say is that oh, when you lift really heavy, your form is off, and then that stresses the joints. Like that's the only angle I could yeah. see them using. But well, okay, yeah, so. Pick a weight that is heavy for you, but you can maintain good form. Right. And that is the goal. The goal is actually to to lift as heavy as possible with good form. And the moment that form starts to waver in the slightest bit, then back off Mm -hmm. and perfect your form. But that should be a good goal of yours is, okay, when I put anything over 100 pounds on my back to squat, after anything over 100, I start to notice I shift a little bit or I cheat or I I notice that my form isn't perfect. Okay, great. Back it down to 190. Get 
re or back it down to 90, get really good at 90, and then move up to 105, and then 110. Like that, that yeah. should be what your that's goal. That's the beauty is. of it. It's like you can regress, you can progress, like and and that's how you have to look at it. What can I do under control and maintain good posture, good mechanics, uh, and, and perform this appropriately? But the goal is to increase, you know, the resistance, increase the stimulus, increase the load, uh, so that way you adapt, you change, you get stronger and you know you, you transform yeah name one condition where getting stronger properly yeah. Yeah, it won't benefit, benefit it yeah you can't every single condition you can think of or situation because there isn't a condition that exists where someone's too strong <laughs> um will improve i remember once i had a client who came to me who told me it was a woman and she had, i don't remember the name of the condition off the top of my head but she had a condition where she her body was super lax. So she was hyper mobile, but she also did no ex exercise. So she was also very weak. This meant that she was unstable and she had lots of pain, hip pain, knee pain, back pain. I mean, this was a woman that could literally, it, she could be a contortionist uh, just if she wanted to. That's how lax her body was. So I, she came to me and she said, I've been told I can't do resistance training because of this. And I said, no, you can. We just need to do it appropriately. And we cannot challenge your ranges of motion because your ranges of motion is so deep and you have no stability. For the first time in her life, she had f found something that took pain away. And I'll never forget. It was like a month into the training. Mm -hmm. And I'd shortened her range of motion because, again, she was so lax. She came to me and she goes, you know, Sal, for the first time in 10 years, my back doesn't hurt when I'm sitting down for a long period of time. And she goes, you know, I can drive now without my hips bothering me. And she's like, this is insane. I don't know why I've been told for so long that I shouldn't do it. And I said, I think it's because a, a lot of the ways that people have observed or doctors have observed people who lift weights, first off, come to them after they've been injured. Yeah. And so, and they're, they're, uh, they're basing it off of poor application of resistance training. If you do it right, like the doctor's not going to see the person who hurt themselves doing it right, right? They're going to see all the people that did it wrong. So they're going to view it in that light. If you do it properly, again, it is the most applicable, safe form of exercise you can do. And it doesn't matter how slim, slender, or short you are. Next question is from Micah2448. What are some of the best habits and activities you can instill in your children throughout their development so they can grow up healthier. Oh, I like this as a like a full on single topic episode. I feel like there's a lot yeah, know, right? to talk about that, like instantly. Yeah. And by the way, we're not experts too. This we're we're experts in fitness. This is challenging for us too. Oh yeah, yeah I no. be very clear. I, and, awesome and challenge. It's a, a for sure a learning process for me because I'm in the thick of it right now, right? So I don't I don't know what uh, some of these things will end up happening later. I could think of three things right away though that that come to mind. One um uh, the, the the decision to not put shoes on Max's feet, I think, was one of the best decisions uh, that I ever made. Um, and I and I watched that uh, as he started to go through the walking phase. Um, my son really didn't go through that, like falling down and hitting his head. Like literally, he's he had one situation where he fell down and hit his head because he had shoes on. He had shoes on. I know. Mm -hmm. Katrina put shoes on him early on and was walking with him, and he just fell out. out of, it was off balance and fell over, and then hit his head and. You know, a little bit of it was on his hairline, so blood came out. It was this big ordeal, if you guys remember uh, when that happened. That was uh, that was crazy that I noticed what a difference it's already made. Now, I have no idea what that impact will be 5, 10, 15 years now, if it really if it plays a role in his athleticism or his balance and coordination. I don't know. Yeah, but his feet look so de strong, developed, and stable. Yes. Whereas you see other kids who start walking with shoes. Pronate. Yeah, pronation, and they have low, little control over their feet. Your feet, there's so many muscles and nerve endings on the bottom, it's, it, and you cover It's like, it'd be like, imagine putting gloves on your kids when they were babies, yeah, yeah. how much less articulate they'd be with their hands. Yeah, right? so that's the, that's the first one. Um, there's one, too, that I I made, like, as a rule, and I totally failed here, right? Or I don't know if I failed. I ended up changing, right? So And now I've learned, like, I, I know better now on this podcast to say, I'm never going to do this, or I'm never going to do that, because it eventually uh, life hits you in the face, and you go, like, oh, maybe I don't want to just be like that. And that was... Uh, the TV thing. Originally, I had this plan that uh, he's not going to have any TV. He's never going to see the TV on like that. I was just going to keep it off until he gets to a, an age where he even really understands what it is. And for the most part, I actually stuck to that pretty well. Then he got to an age where you know he was he was interested in it and what it, what I was doing. And I had these moments of like on Sunday, I wanted to lay around with my son, and he's at an age where he'll actually cuddle up next to me and chill for a while. And I'm like, oh man. This actually sounds really good. I don't want to deprive him that or myself selfishly of that. And so I reintroduced it. But 
making that kind of a rule and being so hyper aware of it early on taught me a lot already about b behavior and how uh, how much time in front of the screen really affects his behavior. So even though I've I've loosened up on he'll never have any television, I I have been I was so uh, uh, paying attention to that so much that I recognized that man if he gets you know, over an hour of iPad or TV time, he his behavior and his sleep completely changes. Like mm -hmm. the way he goes down at bed is completely different than if we have a full day of playing and never doing that. So that taught me a lot about how that can affect behavior, sleep and everything. And so I'm, I'm really glad that. The third thing for me uh, is the no sugar. So, and we now have, and it's actually kind of cool because we have these moments. There's been a couple times now where I've Katrina or myself has allowed him to taste something that's like we were, we just just this happened two days ago. We were doing uh, gingerbread houses with him, and we were mm. we were making it, and it has the icing, and I had it on my finger, and I and I let him lick it, and he was. He didn't want he didn't want anything to wow. do. Yeah, he didn't want nothing to do with it. And I'm like, oh, it's so great, right? So and then my mom did the same thing. I let her let him try to bite a cookie and he just he had no interest in it whatsoever. And we just we we avoided giving him that for such a long time that I actually think that he doesn't even really crave it. Now we're still early. I'm only heading into three years old. So we'll see what happens when and I, I, I predict that like all kids, he'll love it, he'll want it. But I think because we did such a good job of, of limiting how much, I don't think he'll have the same pull because one of the, the mistakes I see a lot of parents do, and I understand, so this isn't me at all shaming anybody, uh, but they use that as a, a way to bribe the kid to do what he wants. I see this a lot. I see that with the TV too. I see the iPad and I see sugar as ways of, of bribing. And you you have to understand that even though it's really, really young, you're already starting to to change their relationship with that thing. The reward, reward, yeah. reward. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I've avoided that. We've avoided doing that. Like we don't use the television and we don't use sugar as a way to reward, punish, or, or, or you know, whatever with him at all. And I think those are things that uh, I'm glad we're doing. You yeah. Know? You know, when you look at the data on this, um, it's actually pretty interesting. It's something like 80% of what you do will impact your kids and 20% of what you say will impact them. Like, for example, children who grow up in households where their parents smoke – uh, even if the parents tell them don't smoke, it's not good for whatever, they're twice as likely to grow up and smoke cigarettes as well. Same thing with alcohol, um, bad eating, you know, or whatever you want to call it, inactivity. So, and this is a tough one because we often, I, I, for me at least, I'm. It's easier for me to tell, like this is what you do, this is what you don't do, teach you, you know, verbally and talk about certain things. But your kids learn from watching, you know. Mm -hmm. Like um, I remember I had a client once that was a. She was a, a therapist who specialized in in uh, child therapy, and we were talking about like eating disorders and stuff. And this is a big one for me because I had body image issues growing up, and after I had kids, I was like, oh, man, I really don't want my kids to have to go through this. I'm already in the fitness space. I already work out. You know, they might see that I post pictures of my body or whatever, like how, you know, how do I navigate this? And she said, you know, um, when I work with kids – and their body image stuff, like sometimes it comes from the parents saying shitty stuff to their kids, which is obvious. Like I would never say to my kids, right. you're, you're, you're ugly, fat. you're fat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that's obvious to me, right? She said the less obvious one is when kids hear their parents talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, what, you know, why did you start doing this? Well, I heard my mom saying how fat she was all the time, you know, or, you know, and, and so that's the big one. It's like, okay, you, your kids model, whether they even try to or not. I mean, I'll tell you what. You talk to anybody who became a parent themselves and became they're a little older, and what do they always say? Oh man, I'm turning into my dad. Yep. I'm turning into my mom. Like I find that with myself. I'm like I got all these traits that my parents have, probably because I grew up with that and I saw them doing it. And you just it becomes instilled in you. So I would say that's probably the most important thing, and that's something that I always that's I constantly get challenged with because I may tell my kids don't go on your electronics so much, and mm -hmm. you know, do, and then I'm on it. You know, I'm on my phone. I'm and I, oh yeah, I'm working, but am I really modeling what I want them? You know, how I want them to be, or you know, how I treat my wife. You know, if I could tell my son, treat you, make sure you treat women this way. But if I yell at my wife or I say something condescending to her, you know, that's what he's going to end up, you know, learning. So I think that's 
No, it's such a good. That's the biggest yeah, one. That's such least. a such a good point. Like that's something that uh, Katrina and I and we actually made an agreement on this uh, before Max was born that we would call each other out on certain things like that. Uh, and one of them was the because I can't just tell him no TV, no iPad, and then be sitting there on my yeah. phone. So if we're ever with Max, that's a that's a rule between her and I. Is like phone is out. If you got to get on the phone, you got to do work business. Go we're both else. very. You go somewhere else. You walk in the other room, but you don't ever sit with him yeah. while he's playing or doing something, and pull your phone out and let him see you do that. And and absolutely, there's been times where mindlessly one of us does it, but the other one always calls that one out so they know. And so it's like, hey, yeah. you got if you got to go take yeah. that call, you got to return something. Go, go oh, away. They're little mirrors, yeah. Yep. No, I totally, like, it, that's the biggest lesson is that uh, they pick up all your habits. They pick up the way that you talk to people. They pick up, uh, you know, the, the food choices you make. And so it's really just been a reflection on my own, um, uh, what I'm bringing in to the house. Like, so we make sure, which was the biggest thing for us, is to make sure we always have, like, good, healthy, whole foods around and, and less the processed stuff. We never even really go buy it. And so they don't, they just don't constantly have that available. Yeah. It's just not there. Uh, and so they, they just tend to not, not make those decisions when they're with their friends quite as much. Again, there's their kids where now it's, uh, unfortunately sugar is a bit of, uh, uh, you know, a currency for them. And I'm struggling through how to deal with that right now because it's, because it's not available now. It's like, Oh, where is it? And if yeah. we're at somebody's house, it's like, well, they have sugar, you know, yeah. and they get crazy over it. So I'm kind of working my way on how to deal with that. I don't really have a good answer for that yet. Um, but one of the best things that I've done uh, in terms of like health and fitness was to sort of engineer a way for them to climb and to express, yeah, really cool. uh, you know, their their um, strength and movement and and challenge them physically. Uh, and so I I just was always passionate about making sure they're outside and how can I make them do things outside that's going to challenge their body in a certain way. So there's a big old trampoline. There's, you know, things for them to climb on. There's, you know, ropes, there's all these. So I, that was just a big thing for me. And then getting them involved in gymnastics was another mm -hmm. great, great addition to their, their body awareness and, and just, you know, really enjoying that they can move in cool, unique ways. And I think that that's something they can build on. Yeah. No, I think that was brilliant that you did that because let's be honest, at that age, they're more interested in play than they are like, I want to learn how to do a bench press yeah. or a shoulder press. I mean, maybe you get lucky and your kid wants to do that, but their likelihood of that is I know, very I'm like slow. praying that my right. youngest is like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> and the likelihood of that is probably one in a million, but showing them how they can be, they can play and, and encouraging physical activity, uh, I think that's what you just reminded me of something else that uh, we do. So I we have friends that obviously have kids that are older. And uh, they, the way that, the, and they're very fit, right? And so one of the things that they do is that, you know, the dad goes to the gym and then, you know, wife watches kids and then he comes home and then they switch mm -hmm. and they kind of do that. And Katrina and I just took a different approach because I, I want them just to see us doing it. Like he doesn't have to do it. So we bring him to like a lot of times when, many times when I didn't even feel like working out that time, but because she's going to go in the garage and go lift. I'll come out there, so it's like a family thing, mm -hmm. and he's kind of playing and doing. Yeah, you his don't own make thing. a big deal about it. Yeah, it's yeah, just what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, we don't even. Yeah, there's nothing. It's like I or I'll put him in the back of the truck, and yeah. that's like a big playpen, so he could watch mom and dad exercising, and we just kind of play with him and we'll work out together. And so my that's idea great. behind that, of course, I don't know how this is going to unfold, but my idea behind that is that it's just a part of our life, and that he yeah. sees it totally. and he picks up on the behaviors, and it's not something I have to tell him he has to do or not do. It's just that yeah. and, and, you know, and I want to be careful that come across like uh, we, we know. You know, raising kids is so hard and they and so will, individual and too. sometimes they'll have the personality where they're going to rebel so you're modeling these behaviors and they're you know 13 14 trying to figure out who they are and off this is very common right oftentimes the kid will just do the opposite you know it's like that what's that one meme where there's like a death metal family yeah. and then one of the kids <laughs> is like super clean cut and you know like he rebelled flanders yeah. Yeah, yeah you know and it's like that's gonna happen how do you react and respond you know, one thing that jessica does so I'll, I'll actually give a specific jessica does this so well this is real hard for me is she does because i have two older kids 12 and, and 16 so now they're at the age where it's a whole different challenge right when you especially when you're a teenager they don't tell you as much. Mm -hmm. They're not as open. Oftentimes they're in the room or with their friends. Their friends have a bigger influence now over them than you do. And so it's like, okay, what do I do? I want to hang out with them. They don't want to hang out with them anymore. How do I get them to open up? Like I'll be in the car with my son and 
you know, we could drive for an hour and a half and he won't say a single word. So I'm like, I want to talk to him, but like, what do I do? Right. Jessica is very good at this. She's like, when they tell you stuff, don't react in a, in a, in a, in a, you know, a, a, a big way. Like if your kid comes up to you and says, Oh, my buddy, you know, he, um, you know, he's doing he, a line of coke. Yeah. He was smoking <laughs> cigarettes or something, you know, or whatever. Don't make this huge reaction. Or, oh yeah. My friend had sex and you know, and they're and he's 15. Don't react super strongly because then they're afraid to, to, pres- tell, you. to tell you. And yeah. she's so good at this. Like they'll say shit and I'm inside of my body. Cause I grew up in a household. We didn't even say the word sex. We didn't say the word drugs. Yeah, we didn't same. say, we just didn't talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and if I said anything like that, my parents would have, this, and that's why they would have exploded. Oh my God, don't do that. But Jessica's so good. They'll say shit. And inside I feel the turmoil. I'm like, oh, I start sweating. Like what? Am, like, <laughs> your friend did what? You know, but I don't say anything. Yeah. And she's super like, oh yeah, you know, a lot of kids experiment at that age and that's, that's pretty normal. And you know, what do you think's happening or how do you feel about it? And I'm, she's so good at it. And then what it did is it opens up, like my daughter now talks about, uh, you know, like, cause she's 12, right? So a lot of her friends are starting their periods and stuff like that. And like, we never talked about that in the house. Now my daughter just comes, you know, she'll tell us stuff and, oh, my friend did this and this is what happened. And here's what we found in the bathroom. And it's a, it's, it's so effective at keeping communication open. And so that, that was, you know, one big thing, but I think the big rocks are this, it's just like with fitness, there's all these things that could make an impact, but the big rocks are the most important thing, which is model the right behavior that has more of an impact than, than yeah. the stuff that you tell them. Show them love and create structure. Those right. are the big things. Love, if you have a lot of discipline without love, that's bad. A lot of love without discipline, not so great. Love, discipline, or structure, and then modeling. And then just keep caring a lot. And then you, you can say and do a lot of things that might not be great. But if you do those three things, uh, I think you're probably, you know, 99% of the way there. Next question is from Cam the Lamb. How do I balance drinking and going out with working on my fitness goals? I really want to get back in shape and go hard, but I also love drinking and watching sports with my friends, so it's hard mentally. Any tips? Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to hear what you guys are going to say right this now. This guy sounds fun. Well, this has to be one of the most common- Super common. Things that you hear from clients. Like, Super common. And, yeah, totally. And I think I, over years, my, my conversation has changed, so I want to hear what you guys have to say, like oh, how, I, how you would present this. Oh, yeah. you know The way I used to present was, if you're serious, you're not going to drink, and you're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, if you really want to cut it out like, well, completely. It, look, here's the bottom line, okay? Um, you can't have everything, okay? So now this isn't a negative uh, message. This is a positive one. You enjoy hanging out with your friends. There's value in that. Nothing wrong with that. You also like fitness. That's phenomenal. Are you going to get the most fit, buffed, best performance if you drink occasionally, eat the occasional slice of pizza with your friends? No. Who cares? Who cares because you also like to hang out with your friends. So unless you're training for a high-level competition, in which case I tell people like, okay, well, you want to perform at your absolute best on this particular day, make sure for the next two months or whatever. But look, this is life. Life is like this. So you enjoy things. That's fine. It's balanced. So you're going to give up a little bit for the other one. Is it all worth it to you? That's up to you. There's no secret answer. I'm not going to tell you. Yes, Z-Biotics, for example, will help you with the alcohol. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Alcohol still has calories. It doesn't eliminate that. It doesn't eliminate the, the fact that you might get drunk and make other you know choices around that. Just It's just accept it. It's not a big deal. As long as nothing's too extreme, you're not hurting yourself with the exercise or the, or the, the drinking, it's, it's not a big deal. Yeah, I mean, we have we have short term goals sometimes, and I think there's nothing wrong with um, intensifying uh, your disciplines for periods. Uh, and, and so I get it. Like I get sometimes you do want to present your your body, or you have the thing specific things where you know, like if I'm I feel more confident because I have to t- take my shirt off, and mm-hmm. I got to kind of uh, you know make sure that I feel good. Uh, in that opportunity and so I would tighten it up a bit then like that's just one of those things you gotta you gotta sacrifice your fun a bit right and so it's just like this is life is where you do you want to do a sprint right now and really focus on that or are you playing the long game is this something that is just like a lifestyle thing that you just want to keep in shape but also have fun on top of that you could totally do that and be flexible with it you just have to know that it, it is pulling back you know your results a bit but it you could totally like weave that in as long as you maintain your your normal uh, healthy f- uh, fitness goals and practices and other disciplines uh, throughout the week. Well, the, uh, 
you like drinking and watching sports with your friends. Uh, are we watching basketball? Because that's on three nights a week. Uh, or are we watching football, which is on every Sunday, and you're doing that? So first of all, I'd ask, how, how often is this? Because, uh, And you, you have to be very realistic with what your goals are because they're conflicting type of goals. One of them is, you know, you're pursuing, you know, the social aspect of, of health and, and drinking and enjoying yourself, which like Sal said, I think there's tremendous value in that. And I think there's nothing wrong with that too, but you also have to be very realistic with what you're asking yourself to do on the physical side too. If you are looking at your favorite Instagram person, who's got, you know, six pack abs and looks amazing and you aspire to look like that and at the same time too you want to drink with your friends every basketball game or every football game on Sundays yeah, it's not gonna work uh, yeah it's just it's unrealistic to do that and I think that I think why we see this is because we had there's a lot of that um promoted in, on like social media you'll see somebody who's got this great physique and then they're only posting these videos of them celebrating and going out and having fun and doing this like well look at see look at yeah, that's after they got to that yeah, yeah and you and you don't know how neurotic they are about their fitness outside of that so all you what you don't see is that guy or girl or spitting it out right after they right or you don't see them getting up every uh, weekend and cooking for the whole week and weighing and measuring and tracking their cal calories and then getting on and doing that cardio early in the morning and doing all these other things so they can do that and still maintain this physique and you just got to ask yourself if that's what you want there there is a there is a balance here i mean i absolutely enjoy a drink uh with my friends and watch a game uh, but i also don't need to do that every single time we sit down and watch a game it's like so you you learn to have a little bit of that balance of like okay well i do love to do that and there's going to be times where you know what i do want to do that I, my buddies and i we haven't been together in you know over a month it's a big game you know our two teams that are playing against each other and we don't have anything to do the next day it's like hey let's let loose and have a good time like 100 percent, i'm going to do that yeah, yeah but if I'm seeing my friends every single weekend and we're watching football and we're having beer every single time, is it really that special? Is yeah. it really that big of a deal if I sacrifice two or three of those times? Like, is it really at that yeah, point? If you can't have fun with your friends without including alcohol, I think you should really ask yourself. Every time, right? Yeah, like, like every time. Like, that's, that's a question you'd ask yourself. Why? Yeah. And, but again, it's all, look, it's all about, it's so funny too. I was, I was thinking right now, like we, Adam and I went to that event in Arizona and we it was like nine o'clock at night and we both look at each other and like let's we should probably not just go to bed and it's funny because people might be like oh they're so disciplined they didn't go out and drink with people <laughs> see I wasn't there and it's yeah, like so. no it's because we have kids and we're tired yeah. and we want to go to bed but yeah. you know the truth is you know like like as a fitness podcast we had a weed sponsor at one point okay we had a cannabis sponsor that a delivery company we will hang out and we'll drink and enjoy ourselves sometimes and and I was so neurotic when I was younger that I kind of learned this the hard way. Like I learned like, wait a minute, that's not really enjoying life. What was that study? I think it came out of Stanford that showed that like bad relationships were as bad for your health as like smoking, smoking 10 day. packs, of, you know, yeah. 10 cigarettes a day or something like that. Yeah. So it's all health. But here's the, here's the challenge. The challenge isn't necessarily that. The challenge is the, I want my cake and I want to eat it too. Well, yeah. You can't do it all, okay? You're not going to be 4% body fat, you know, Instagram ready. But also on the weekends, you hang out with your friends and you drink. So it's not going to happen. But that's okay. You know, that's okay that you got to be able to to look at the whole thing from a balanced perspective. Now, if you want to do that, then it's going to mean that you're going to have to cut out a lot of other things that you enjoy in order to look a particular way, which I would argue is a miserable existence. I'm going to be honest with you. It's not <laughs> oh, yeah. a very fun. I'm the most neurotic out of all of us uh, here in the studio. But I also don't go that extreme because it sucks. It sucks to be that extreme all the time. You got to find that value for yourself and find that balance. And there, Justin mm -hmm. was kind of alluding to this. There's nothing wrong with you saying, you know what? The next eight to twelve weeks, I'm gonna, totally. I am gonna be neurotic. I am gonna like, I'm gonna skip all drinking occasion social events. I'm gonna train hard. I'm gonna weigh. I'm measure. And I actually think there's tremendous value in doing that. And and also asking yourself like, this isn't me saying for the rest of my life. Like remember, I was the guy who competed this. for three years. Yeah. And during that time, I carried my Tupperware and missed out on all these, uh, all these you know drinking occasions. And I don't feel like I really missed out that much. And but I, if you did I, it forever, right? If I did yeah. it forever and that was my life, I would feel that way. But I did it for an, a, a period of my time because I had a goal that I cared about more and I knew uh, there'll be plenty of times in the future for me to drink and I had plenty of times of drinking before that. So I think there's nothing wrong and I think there's lots of value in you making that sacrifice to get to that point because 
once you get to that like that what you were seeking as far as your 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 aesthetics or whatever we're we're, we're chasing right now once you get there and and you find you know what it takes discipline wise sacrifice consistency wise to get to that place you then can start to do things like adding the drinking in here and there and you can see how much it affects it yeah. and you can and go we'll see like, what's worth it right and then exactly and then you have an and that's exactly like what it, is it worth it I'll to ask you Adam you've done this before is it worth it to walk around uh, just for life just for your life is it worth it to walk around five percent body fat all the time no <laughs> no no for the the few as cool as it is the oh look yeah shredded. no I've, and I've shared on the show before one of the most epic moments ever was uh the the weekend in vegas when i went pro it, it's it burned in my brain it felt amazing to be on top of the world at that moment and to feel that crazy in shape um even knowing that i still would no nah, i wouldn't want that all the time because those are those are tiny little sliver moments that you have the rest of the time no one gives a shit you're walking around five percent underneath your clothes no one cares yeah. you know what i'm saying and so i'm so glad you, really you said that for? i'm so mm -hmm. glad you said that because i think uh we have this mental image of what you know it looks like to, to or what it's like to look fit and healthy you know what the reality is if you're generally healthy you're gonna look good Yep. You're not going to be super shredded, but super shredded, nobody really cares mo for the most part anyway, except for other fitness fanatics, I'll be honest. If I get super shredded, you know who, people who notice? Other like fitness maniacs. Other people are kind of like, oh, he's a little too lean. I've actually had people tell me that. Oh, if you gain a little bit of body fat, you'd look better, you know, type of deal when I've gotten mm -hmm. that lean. So mm -hmm. nobody really cares. It's not that big of a deal. You can't have it all, but so what? Like, I think balance is the key. This is a lifelong pursuit. Yep. And this, this, you know, this dichotomy that we create with ourselves is like, I think it's totally silly sometimes. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our fitness and health guides. They can help you with most of your fitness and health goals. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Salon. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.